It's a little cafe, actually just straight away from our warehouse and it's kind of in the middle of nowhere, but it's got a name for itself in this local area. It's the best coffee in the Pagewood Botany area and kind of just attracted a, a bit of a speciality crowd. And I don't know, it's just a cute little cafe and they've done well and they're good, good guys running it. Just the usual espresso, thank you. So they're running the Lama Zorko PB here. So it's the commercial version of the Lama Zorko Linea Mini. Pretty cool machine. And for the grinders, this through here, they're running the Anthem SP2 and an EK43 for their black coffees and a puck press to tamp. This coffee was from a Lama Zorko Linear 3 group, PB, and they actually ran this one from the EK43 grinder and tamped with the puck press. Let's just jump back in the studio and look at the Linear Mini, the same version of this machine, just compacted. Now, Lama Zorko. Before we talk about the Mini, I might take a step back and talk about my journey with Lama Zorko because I may be a little bit biased with this machine. Like many in the coffee world, Lama Zorko has a special place in my heart. I was in Florence in 2015 when this machine first started being built, seeing the first production runs. So it sort of feels like I've seen it from its birth to now. And in Florence, I've actually got my name on the factory wall and a tile. Taking a step back, Lama Zorko has been there from the get-go. I remember playing around the commercial Linear Classics and I actually owned the Linear Classic at home, one group. It's actually just sitting back there. Now, when I had that machine at home, it was big. It required 15 amp power, which in Australia meant a dedicated line. It had an external motor and pump, so it had to be plumbed in. By no means was a home machine. Yeah, I loved having it at home. Fast forward, and then a little later, Lama Zorko actually released a home machine, the GS3. Now, the GS3 was based on the Strava, which was their commercial version. They were awesome on coffee, had a big boiler for milk with 10 amp, had a water reservoir could be plumbed in. They really were the ultimate high-end machine. Originally was an AV, which was a volumetric, and then they came out in the MP. So I actually had an AV, which I used to rent out to markets, and I had an MP at home, which I heavily modified. At the time, they didn't have the gauge on top, and I modified that from the Strata. Now, this is going back many years. I later sold that machine, and in a full circle of life, randomly, one of my dad's friends called me and said, Pedro, I bought a GS3, can you come have a look at it? I went there, and it was mine. I knew it was my machine, because of the mods I had done, and I knew some things I'd put little scratches in it, etc and they're all there, so it felt like a full circle. Moving forward to 2015, when I was in Florence and this machine was getting developed, or basically coming off the production line, it felt like they had built the ultimate home machine. Now, this was built on the Linear, and the Linear was a workhorse of their range. So currently you've got the Linear and the Linear PB. And if you go into most cafes, in the speciality world, you'll see it. To be honest, many cafes non-speciality, you just see the Lama Zorko Linear. Now, the cool thing that they did was they effectively shrunk the machine, but they kind of changed things up a bit. On all Lama Zorkos and the GS3s, you had the saturated brew boiler for your group head. This machine, they did it slightly different. They did an integrated 170 mil 
brew boiler to be able to heat up faster and really get that consistent temperature at the group head. So this machine was basically designed like the workhorse for home. If you wanted to dive into coffee and go a little bit crazy and look at flow control, have volumetrics, etc., there was the GS3. There are other machines from other brands. This machine was made as basically simple raw machines. No digital display, no bells and whistles, no fuss, but just executed well. What that means is some things are pros and some things are negatives. Like the PID controller is actually a wheel, which is just under here on the right. It's actually a little bit hard to access depending on where you've got the machine located and to know where you're at because you don't have a digital reader. In saying that, it is available through the app. Because the machine was a bit smaller, they kind of did things a little bit different. So let's go through and look at some of the specs of this machine. We've got the integrated group head and the manual paddle. To see better how that works, let's just open the panel here, have a look. Moving the front cover here, we've got the 170 mil integrated brew boiler. So that's it here. And looking at the paddle, what the paddle is, as you move it across, that part there hits the micro switch. As it hits the micro switch, it activates the group head. So if you think about it effectively, it's the same as a rocket switch, but we've got a lot nicer feel to activate that group head. When it comes to both the hot water and the steam valve, these valves are actually the same valves as used on the commercial machine. So effectively, this is a little commercial machine for home. And now, just removing the back panel here, we can see the rest of the machine. That huge boiler, that's a three and a half litre steam boiler. And just hiding under there, right at the bottom, that's a motor and pump with a pump being there. And that's what makes this machine commercial and quiet. And just the ability to just pump out steam. It really is, once you look inside, a solid and commercial machine. Now that we've put it back together, let's keep looking into this machine. So you've got the 170 mil integrated boiler right here on top and a 3.5 litre steam boiler on the rear. Now 3.5 litres for a home machine is actually quite large. So effectively this is not just a home machine, but it's a machine you can pump out steam. So think coffee carts, think offices. The steam's really dry because you can really lift up the steam pressure on that rear boiler. Now they've actually put the steam arm on the right and it has a fully articulating arm so you can really position the jug in any way you want and the steam is basically insane and very dry steam. This makes a lot of difference when you're focusing on latte art where you really don't want to be bringing in the extra water content to your milk. When it comes to the porter filter of this machine, it runs a stainless porter filter, actually the same porter filter you get across any of the Lama Zorkel machines. So it really is a full commercial machine. On the left here, you've got a water tap, so it's a hot water. It's a little stumpy little hot water that just sits down there. Now, it is only just one temperature. Some other machines do infuse water and you can run two different temperatures. This is just hot water. Going further down, and we will come back up to that group head. Going further down, you've got a large drip tray with a nice surface working area and enough room to fit an Akaya Luna. The drip tray is actually held on by magnets. So when you pull it out or put it back in, it really holds in place really firmly. Now let's pull it out, because just behind the drip tray, we've actually got the water tank. Now it's a large two litre water tank that you can fill up through here. The good thing about the water tank being here is it gives a lot of surface area up top. So if you think about markets, coffee carts, or even at home, you can really pile in those cups here and get a good workflow. The annoying thing about having the drip tray here is you have to remove the water tank, pull the drip tray forward, fill it up, and there's no visual indicator of where your water is from the external side of the machine. So there's no slot here on the frame or anything for you to look at. In saying that, when the water runs low, the blue light here flashes. And once it flashes, it actually allows you to have enough water to finish that shot. So you're not gonna kill that shot. So it's kind of a positive and it's kind of a negative, depending on which way you look at it. But in saying that, you can plumb in these machines, or if you're in a car situation, run it from a big bottle and have a flow jet. So realistically, most people are probably gonna plumb in these machines. So this won't be an issue but it's just something to bear in mind. Now, moving back to the group head and the temperature controller, there's two cool things here. Now, the group head runs a lever actuation, 
So you move it across and the pump starts and you move it back and it stops. This feels amazing. It's a really nice movement, but it's no different to say a rocket switch. It runs five seconds pre-brew and that can be adjusted through the app. So you do have a pre-brew and a ramp up to nine bars. Being a rotary pump machine, you can adjust that pressure if you want it to be higher or lower than nine bars. Now talking app, this machine, like many at this price point, does have an app. You can control its turning on, turning off, temperature, how many shots it's had, etc. Now the app's a whole different video and there's a bit into the app, but just know that it is available. In saying that, the early models from 2015, 16, 17 didn't have an app. The app did come later down the track and you can retrofit it to the machine. Another cool thing about this machine is just the way it looks. It really does look beautiful. It's finished well and it's made just like the commercial machines. What that means is it travels well. You can put this in the back of a car and take it to the markets, take it to your holiday house. It is a little bit heavy, so it's not just a pick up and move, but you've got the option to take it with you. Some machines just don't travel as well as this machine. So we've preloaded the porter filter with 21 grams. We're gonna lock it in and run the espresso. Cool thing about when you're locking in this porter filter, it's just how solid the machine is. It really is a heavy, well-built machine. When we move the paddle across, Bristol lights activate and it's just a nice feeling. It's, it's subtle, but it's just like, I'm awake, I'm making coffee. And the coffee is really coming out with really nice crema, really nice body. Same as what you'd get from a cafe and the pump being a rotary is really silent, really quiet, really nice. Just cutting that shot off there. Exactly the same espresso I'd expect from a cafe and it really does have nice body and nice crema. I'm a little biased towards this machine. I really do feel like it's a very industry standard machine. So now that we've done espresso, let's do a milk based drink. First things first, let's get the coffee going. While we're doing the coffee, one cool thing, once again, it's a cool touch arm, so you can touch it without burning yourself. And just doing the milk, because it is a twin boiler machine, you can do the milk at the same time as your espresso, which does help. Now, I'm definitely not a latte artist. Every time I see others on YouTube, I'm admired by their skills. But drinking predominantly black coffee, milk's not my thing. But there you go, a flat white. Thank you for watching this review of the Lama Zorko Linea Mini. We are gonna be doing a review on the rest of the Lama Zorko range, GS3, AV, MP, Strata, and Lever. And we would like to know in the comments, do you have this machine? Which of the rest of the range you wanna see first? And if you've enjoyed this video, if it's bringing you value, hit that thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you very much and see you on the next video.